What's this? Ah. Oh. Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, and that, I hope, is a new record for the fastest reveal in YouTube history. But there's no point keeping you in suspense here, since this brand new pizza oven, my latest purchase, has been in the background of my videos all summer, and I've enjoyed watching the comments come in in terms of what is that when it's under the cover, and to when are you going to tell us about the pizza oven? So that's what's in store today. I'm going to fill you in on my latest purchase, what I got it for, what we're going to do with it, what I think of it so far. So without further ado, let's get started. So as always, I'll put chapters down below to help it make it easier to navigate this video. But the three chapters we're gonna cover is first, the journey that got us to this point. This is something I've been planning for years, especially when we built the outdoor kitchen. This countertop had a pizza oven in mind, but it's taken us a long time to pull the trigger. Okay, it's taken me a long time to pull the trigger. And I wanna share some of the thinking, the hesitation, the pros, cons, etc. what got us to this point. Second, I want to go through the oven itself. There's just an abundance of choice. That's in part what took so long. So I'll give you a quick overview of the oven that I picked and why. Uh, and maybe that's some of the same questions that you're facing. It might help you out if you happen to be thinking about a pizza oven. And then lastly, I want to share what I think about it. We've been doing a couple cooks all summer. So I want to share what I've cooked, what we plan to do next. So now you know how to navigate this video. Let's start. So the idea for a pizza oven is actually a seed that was planted nearly three years ago. One of the videos that I did first on my channel was actually comparing a Kamado Joe with a Dojo versus a non-Dojo. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen that video, you know, cover your ears, but I found that the pizza on the Dojo was better. Uh, so everybody in the family found it better and I called it about you know 5% better. Not night and day better, but it's better. The Dojo I am going to give a 1% but a friend at the time had just picked up a wood-fired pizza oven and there was just something uh, different. Maybe it's the extra temperature. So the dojo sort of caps out about 700 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas it's not com uncommon for ovens like mine to be able to run at eight, 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Maybe it's the fuel source, you know, charcoal versus wood or a whole bunch of other factors. And I wanted to do a uh, head to head, but the practical logistics of moving a 300 pound Kamado to my friend's backyard where he has the pizza oven or vice versa, moving his pizza oven uh, to my backyard where I have the Kamado Joe just hasn't been something we've been able to make happen over the past couple years. And so now, since they're side by side, that's definitely a video that I'll have in store. So make sure you're subscribed and you have the notification bell turned on so you don't miss that video when it comes out because I can't wait now that they are side by side to be able to get these two taste experiences a little bit closer together. So that was the original catalyst for it. And over the last couple of years, just being at their house or in other friend's house where there's been pizza parties, there's just something about the experience I absolutely love. And like when I picked up my offset, I am all team live fire here. And so there's a couple things that I hope to be able to do differently on my Kamado Joe. So on my Kamado Joe, it's all heat from the bottom, uh, whereas on the pizza oven and my offset, it's over the top heat. We've got some live fire control. And just like on the offset where I hope to pick up some tips and tricks, and we've already done that, that will improve our low and slow cooking. I think the same will translate here with our pizza oven to what we could bring to our Kamado Joe. So I think it's a win-win for everybody. And and I can't wait to share the uh, the journey with you and have you be part of that. Again, like bef uh, I mentioned before, be sure to mention in the comments if there's a cook or a comparison you'd love to see. So let me tell you a little bit about the oven itself. So why pick this oven? Well, believe it or not, my buying criteria has a little bit more to it than does it come in red? Although I can't fault you for thinking that it starts and stops there. Uh, one of the issues that I wanted to try and avoid, and even though I had a number of companies reach out and offer to send me a free oven, which financially would make a ton of sense, is the clearance in the dome. So some of these small dedicated you know, pizza ovens that are portable or in your backyard don't have significant clearance out of the front. And this is an issue that I've even ran into with the Dojo. So this is a, a pan that's similar to the one I have inside uh, and we're using it for dinner, but it's our lasagna pan is that it just, it doesn't fit the clearance. Now, at least with the Dojo, you could open that up, let your heat out and drop it in so you could cook things other than pizza. But I did not want to get a one trick pony. So first, 
the door size was uh, a key consideration. Second consideration is just the space. So we, while we have some space, we have unlimited space. So this is a pizza oven that can hold two pizzas at once. La Pizza makes ovens that go all the way up to at least a four, I believe, uh, if not even more. But we, uh, again, aren't turning out that many uh, pizzas. And I found for our backyard and size, you can constantly have two pizzas going. And that is more than enough to keep a crowd of 30 happy and constantly have pizza coming out, especially since you do it in about 60 to 90 seconds. So it's not a long wait and have the staying power to keep going. So uh, as many of you have seen, I cook all year round in our climate, uh, being able to retain heat and burn a clean fire is really important. And so the La Pizza ovens come with uh, 304 stainless steel, North American everything. They're made here uh, in North America, 304 stainless steel and five inches of insulation. And so that does a couple of things. So for cold winters, uh, it makes it that we're not going to struggle to, you know, just go through a bunch of logs to maintain heat uh, and we also get the full benefit of that uh, radiant heat that's going to get stuck on the outside plus as we have kids in the area this is running and I'll bring you over uh, and we'll do a temperature gun in a second but as you can tell I'm able to put my hand on here without getting scolded so when we have kids in the area and it's getting at a level that they can reach um, less insulated units you'll get a burn and I've unfortunately uh, seen and heard of that through friends and family firsthand so that was uh, another Another consideration and third on the list was price <laughs> it's amazing how quickly the prices can escalate on these things especially if you're importing uh, you know an oven right from Italy and I've even seen recently an article I'll put a, a clip of it up on here I think it was from swagger magazine that actually called out one of their winners the best value uh, is ovens made by La Pizza oven now they went for the uh, the larger size and what I got this is the piccolo model so it'll hold about two pizzas at once but based on its ability to hold heat keep going add another log and you've got plenty of BTU we do parties and sort of no more than 20 to 30 people and two pizzas and 60 seconds this is more than enough for the entertaining style uh, of parties that we host but that price is uh, another consideration and just like they pointed out here the direct compare uh, you know from alpha and some others is nearly double uh, you know what I paid for this so this is uh, I'll put it up on screen so you can see the example here of the pricing but I'm willing to pay a little bit but not go absolutely crazy so all that uh, plus the benefit of uh, these are actually made about an hour from where I live there's free shipping in the US uh, you know distribution all throughout North America but free shipping in the US free shipping in Canada 304 stainless steel North American steel components five inches of insulation and a price uh, and the utility with the door and the vent system that actually allowed me to do more than be a one trick pony is what led me to pick this oven. Now that you know a little bit more about why I picked it, let me come nice and close and, or bring you nice and close and show you a little bit more about it. Okay, so for controlling temperatures, we have a couple options. These little cutouts here, you can see the fire in. Fire's been going for about 10 minutes. I've been recording the video, but just uh, we can either let that draw the air or we can pull our door ajar here and this is really great for something like cooking spatchcock chicken where you want to retain some of that heat the other way that we can retain some heat is by adjusting our damper so we can open it all the way up and just let that uh, heat straight out the top or if we want to lock that down help trap in some of that heat let me uh, just put you back on the stand here so i can remove this and we can check the temperature inside right now looks like our air temperature about the 10 minute mark if I can get that to focus I don't know why it's not focusing looks to be about 600 degrees Fahrenheit it's not bad 10 minutes in let's uh, check the surface temperature on the stone okay let's remove our door and uh, you guys have always seen me use my thermopan IR which has a built-in IR gun that can take surface temperatures one of the things I found in my first cook is it's got a limitation of about 600 degrees uh, Fahrenheit so right on the front I'm 630 and I'm not able to go any further so I ended up picking up the Thermoworks actual IR gun for pizza ovens. So as you can see right in here, whew, I can't keep my hand there. We're sitting at about 833 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're now about 15 minutes in. My camera's actually overheated on me and turned off a couple times just based on the uh, heat coming out. But if I give you a quick tour here, you can see the workspace that we have and some of that awesome flames just rolling over if I drop down here. 
I'll give you a little bit of a view of what your pizza would be subjected to. Okay, last but not least, what have I cooked so far and what are we planning to cook with it? But before I go too far, I forgot to show you the tools. So there is an amazing tool set here that I've actually been getting use out of with my offset, my pizza oven, and even my Joe's. So they uh, come with the option to step up to an amazing tool set as an accessory. And so I'm gonna give that uh, two thumbs up as well. And I like it so much, I reached out and La Pizza has even offered me an affiliate. So if you do buy through the link, you get a save 30% and I do uh, just full disclosure if you use that link and use that code uh, receive a small commission which helps fund the channel and do the things that we're doing so enough about that that's always down in the description below uh, so one of the reasons I wait for doing these types of reviews and products is I want to make sure that I have a chance to give it a fair shake. One of the biggest mistakes I made on the channel is doing a review of the Joe Tisserie, I think even the day that I bought it. And turns out some of the things that I didn't love about it were more operator error or operator skill level issues than the product itself. And it's gone on to become one of my absolute favorite accessories. It's tied for first place with the soapstone and I absolutely love it and so my hesitation even though there was lots of comments or questions or emails or uh, you know making notes in the bottom of the video when are we gonna get to the pizza oven is I want to wait and make sure before I do this video uh, and share anything uh, it's just because it was a good purchase for me I don't want anyone to accidentally go out and buy something or think it's a good uh, you know use of their money if you know you see it here in the backyard and I bought that and maybe I'm not thrilled with it so I like to give things uh, several months of uses exactly Exactly what I've done lately with you know offset as well and my pizza oven and as you can tell by the fact that this video exists I'm beaming with enthusiasm for my purchase I absolutely love it just as much now as the day that I picked it up and so we're ready to go full bore ahead with you know some recipes so I've tried a bunch of different things so far and one of the things that I've enjoyed getting to learn not just in addition to more live fire management techniques but it's the different heat sources and I should say different strengths of heat sources so we're we're still using the same three that I always talk about. So we've got our conduction, which is food or a cast iron sitting on those hot stones. But these, uh, again, get really hot. So we definitely have some, uh, you know, bottom heat like we're used to on our Kamado Joe. I was able to cook some beer brat sausages and get that beer almost up to a boil. But at the same time, we've got that over the top heat. and We were able to get some amazing sort of nutty caramel texture on our brie as well as on the sausages. They, they taste it even better than they look and they look pretty pretty amazing. So that was uh, a great experience. And then our third uh, heat source, uh, just like always, is convection. We're moving air. And so I would say, you know, versus the uh, Kamado Joe, pretty similar on the conduction heat, bottom heat, uh, depending on what we want to get our stone to, you know, we've got heat from the bottom. Where we're getting more, just I think based on the fire rolling over the top, is that, uh, you know, sort of radiant heat, uh, you know, from that fire as from the heat up top. So depending on how we want to build our fire here you have a little bit more control over cooking things from the top and this has been great for spatchcock chicken i've done an alabama white chicken you know shishito peppers um, and of course i'd be remiss to have a pizza oven without doing pizza so we've done a couple attempts at pizza here and then just learning uh, and enjoying the experience along the way but the biggest learning so far is just really coming down to the dough i've always done sort of same day set doughs that i wake up and say oh, i think it'd be fun to have pizza or let's invite some friends over for pizza tonight and so those doughs are ideal for that 600 to maybe sort of max 700 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a perfect fit for the dojo because it's capped uh, at 700 degrees. But as you can see, sort of 15 minutes in, we are up over 800 degrees. We need a dough with a little bit uh, different uh, hydration and consistency to be able to withstand these temperatures and really take advantage of that high heat that this oven is able to put off. And so don't worry, uh, we will do that head to head uh, soon, but I'm still gonna get through a couple cooks. So let me know what you'd like to see. I'm thinking, obviously first pizza if you want to see any of these clips that I've shared whether it's spatchcock chicken the sausages or anything like that let me know uh, and then we'll get into the dojo uh, how does it compare taste bring some friends over uh, you name it let me know down in the comments but that's about it for today's video I hope you really enjoyed it uh, and you're gonna enjoy the experience I can't wait to figure out what we learned and just like our offset it's all about bringing the tools techniques and tips things that we pick up along the way and then figuring out how to adapt the best uh, of those learnings into whatever cooker you may be using uh, at home. So I can't wait to uh, go on this journey with you. That's it for today though. I'm James from Soak and Dad Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid.
to fire it up.